All right, my name is Sean. I'm here with Cole Desi, and we're going over the maintenance, uh, the basic maintenance of the Avance 1501C. Um, we are recording this, so you will be able to uh, review it uh, anytime at your uh, your own convenience. So if you come in late, if you miss it, uh, no worries. Uh, we will send you the video. Uh, on the basic maintenance of the Avance 1501C, um, the one thing you do have to remember that you do want to do is uh, every four hours of embroidery use, you want to make sure that you oil your reciprocator. I'm sorry, your, um, your rotary hook down below. Uh, basically, your rotary hook is two metal pieces, and they rotate against each other. And what happens is that if the oil dries um, from uh, you know excessive use, it's basically two metal pieces rubbing against each other. You'll start to hear a, a high-pitched metal sound. Um, if you do, no worries. Just open this up here. I will show you. Make sure you remove your bobbin. Take the bobbin case out. This is your rotary hook down here. I'm going to go ahead and try not to get everybody seasick. And they've got this all twisted in here. Please excuse me. Twisted this cable up. All right. And basically, what we have here is this is your rotary hook right in here. I'll get my, my pointer. What you want to do on your rotary hook, I can zoom in close enough to be able to see. There is right here on the side. You can see the hole there. It is. You can see it. There's a hole on your recip on your uh, your rotary hook down below. What you want to do is just put a couple of drops in that hole right there, and then come back to your rotary machine and hit the scissors, which is the manual trim, and that will cycle the rotary hook uh, through its cycle to lubricate the inside of those two uh, uh, metal pieces. The other way to uh, oil is what you can do, which takes a little more time, this you might want to do at the end of the day or over the weekend, is you want to remove the needle plate. Now, with the needle plate, you do get an offset uh, screwdriver that comes with the, uh, the machine, but I would recommend, if you can, go out and get a ratchet. Um, this is the easiest, and, it, and there's a flathead on it now. You can switch it out from a flathead to a Phillips, but it's a lot easier to turn this little knob, then it is actually try turning it, pick up, set down, move, turn, pick up, set down, move, to loosen the screws on this uh, the needle plate. It is in a a definitely strange position to get a, a screwdriver in there. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and lock it in and remove the two screws to remove the needle plate. Set those screws to the side so we do not lose them. This one off of here. And then we'll remove our needle plate. So in here, I'm going to show you where we are going to oil it. What you want to do is you want to put a couple of drops right here, which is right in this little opening in the front. That'll get between the outer section and the inner section and get that part lubricated to where you, once you put two or three drops here, on the side over here, you'll start to see the oil drip down. In that case, come up to your embroidery machine again, get the, the, the scissors to trim it, let it run through its cycle, do that a couple of times, and then you could, you know, leave the needle plate off for the night. Um, definitely leave your bobbin case out for the night. You don't want to put that back in because it will get oiled. And that would be uh, doing the rotary hook. You want to do that every, I'd say, four hours of use. If uh, in one day you sew three hours, just do it at night, one time, uh, sit over the uh, overnight. The next morning, put everything back together and, and you know do your uh, your jobs. If you're sewing eight, twelve hours a day, you're going to do it two to three times a day. You definitely want to keep that lubricated. <clears throat> it's just like cams in a car; it's constantly moving at a high rate of speed. You don't want that to get to dry out. You don't want it to damage. And you definitely don't want to hear the high uh, the high pitched squeal sound. Does everybody understand that? Have any questions on that part for oiling the rotary hook? Uh, 
Okay, no questions? Good, good. <laughs> the other thing you want to do is you also want to take care, I probably do this maybe every, <coughs> excuse me, every week, um, every couple of weeks, is you want to make sure that your, your bobbin case um, doesn't fill with wet, um, dust, some of the, the particles from your garments or thread. Because basically what happens is on the side of your uh, bobbin case, you can see here this little spring. This is your tension spring. Whenever your bobbin is too tight, too loose, you're actually loosening the, the bigger of the two screws just a little bit to that when you do the drop test, you're getting the two to three inch drop. But occasionally, once a week, once every other week, you just want to get a very thin piece of paper and you want to slide it underneath the spring and just kind of like just move it back and forth, up and down to get out any excess lint. Uh, thread particles might have gotten trimmed and keep that nice and clean. Try to keep the inside of it clean, just get a can of air, blow it out. Do that every, uh, I would say once a week, depends on how much you're sewing, to every couple of weeks. If you're doing, you know, six, 12 hours a day, you know, definitely do it once a week, if not more, just to keep this fresh. Um, the other thing you want to be careful of is do not drop this. Uh, it is, uh, you know, perfectly round to fit the bobbin. If this gets dropped or dented or you push too hard to squeeze together, uh, what happens is it becomes um, oblong, so to speak, egg-shaped, and your bobbin cannot rotate in the bobbin case smoothly. So what happens, you start getting thread breaks, the bobbin's not catching, um, etc. So you definitely want to take care of this and do not drop this. Put that to the side. Also what you want to do is, I had a can of air in here, is just blow out your, uh, your rotary hook area because it will fill with lint and dust up in here, thread particles after it trims. Just take a can of air, blow it out. Um, there's a little lint brush that comes in your toolbox. Go ahead and take that, run it up in here to get all the excess lint and dust out of here. You want to keep this nice and clean because if you get dust buildup, thread buildup, what happens is it could get caught uh, between the two knives, so then you start having trimming problems to where um, it's trimming it, but it's not actually cutting the thread. So what happens is your wiper comes down. Let's see if I can find the wiper here. Your wiper comes down, grabs the thread right here, pulls it back, but it's still connected to your garment. That could just be that your knife's full of dust, lint, um, thread particles, and it's just not allowing it to do its full motion. So just come in here, clean that out. Maybe even just putting once in a while, maybe once every couple of weeks, once a week, depends on how much you sew, right here on the movable knife, which is the one on the left side. I'll zoom in for you guys so you can see a little closer. Is This is your movable knife, and this one is your stationary knife. So what happens is this comes out and comes back. And you start to get a lot of thread buildup, lint buildup right in here. What happens is this can't go fully all the way back to cut your thread. So it, the, the wiper in the back pulls the thread up, but it stays connected to the garment. So you just come in here clean it out, put a couple of drops, maybe one or two drops right here on the movable knife in the back part of it, and then just hit the trim button a couple times to get that lubricated so it works nice and smooth. All right? So that uh, rotary, uh, the rotary hook is uh, every four hours of use. Everything else I just did, maybe do it once a week, depends on how much you're sewing. If you're doing two shifts, I would definitely do it maybe every three days and just make sure that's nice and clean. Um, the other thing you want to do is for the maintenance is let's go ahead and open up the blue door that says Avance, which is underneath our caution tape. In here, you've got 15 needle bars. What you're going to do is you're going to put a drop of oil. And if you don't have one, I would highly recommend getting one of these. Uh, it's an oil pin from Coleman and Company. I think it's like $4.95 full of oil. And these oil pins are refillable. So if you run out, just pop the top off, fill it with oil, put the top back on you're good to go, but it makes it a lot easier when you're putting in oil, you can actually see, I don't know if you can see it right there, you can actually see, you know, how many drops of oil you're actually putting on the machine, because you don't want to oil, over oil the machine, because then it starts dripping on your garments. So what you're going to do is inside here, you're going to see um, the 15 bars with springs around them. What you're going to do is just put your, your tip of the needle, which, you know, the oiling pin, up against the bar, and just put a drop of oil on each one of these. 
That'll keep the bar lubricating. The other thing you want to do in the front is your, your cover down here at the bottom with the needle numbers on it. Slide that to the right, and it will come out. It's held on by two magnets on the side, so once you start pushing it, just slide it on out. Down below here, what we have is, you can see the, the, the felt pads for each needle. There's three holes, or five holes, I'm sorry, on the front of this. So putting it in one in each hole, you're expecting that oil to be put here in the middle and then to go to both to the right and to the left for each pad. It's easier to slide that off and all you're going to do is just take your oil pin, just put some oil, you know, four or five drops on each little section of the felt pads. You want to make sure this keeps, uh, you know, not saturated with full oil, but enough oil that you can tell you've got oil on it. This will help with the dampening of it, that when the needle's sewing and this goes down and hits the pad, oil on the pad keeps it soft. Keeping it soft keeps it quiet. If it starts to get hard, it gets brittle, and you start hearing a noise or a louder noise while it's sewing. It's just, you know, at 800 stitches a minute, this metal piece is coming down, hitting a hard felt, hitting a hard piece of metal. It's going to make a little bit of noise. So you want to keep, make sure you keep that lubricated. You're going to do that every, uh, you know, once a week. Um, everything I'm showing you, you're going to be doing once a week. The rotary hook is really the only thing you want to do every four hours of use. So once you get those oiled, I will go ahead and turn the machine to the far left, get our needle number one. We have over here, we have three oiling spots that are highlighted in red. You've got one up front, one on the middle, and one at the top. Just put one or two drops in either one of those. Next, you have got a hole just behind, right here, just behind the, uh, the needle plate. You just want to put a couple of drops in there. You've got another spot here in the back. Let me show you right there. Just put a couple of drops in there. And that lubricates the lower shaft so that it, uh, you don't hear any audio. Um, how's everybody else doing? Can everybody hear me okay? Um, I'm not sure uh, why you can't hear me. Uh, maybe try uh, either uh, turning off your speakers, make sure the sounds turn all the way up, make sure it's not on mute. Um, all else fails, you can always restart the webinar. Cool, thank you, thank you. Yes, it does apply to the forehead. Um, the same oiling spots are on uh, the forehead as well. Uh, it's just basically you just got to do it four times. But um, on that, I would definitely do the you know the rotary hook every four hours, and definitely do everything else once a week. Um, especially as much as uh, I know you're sewing, is you, you definitely want to keep that lubricated. The other thing we want to look at is here in the back. There's another red spot, a red dot for oil. Which is right up here in the back. You want to put a couple of drops there. Keep that lubricated. We want to go ahead and come back to the front. And in the front, right here in the front, once you've got the head on needle number one, you'll see two openings on the right-hand side in the silver plate. You can see the bar through the openings. Just take, just put one or two drops of oil on that. That'll keep that bar and the mechanism inside lubricated. Once we have done that, we now want to rotate. And if you got your machine on, just turn it to needle 15. Just type in 10 plus 5, make it switch to 15. My machine is not turned on, so I'm manually turning it with the red passivity knob, which is the same knob you'll use if you're ever getting no needle error. Basically what that means is you basically do not have a needle directly over the hole of the needle plates, so the machine can't recognize what needle it's on, so it doesn't know what needle to go to. So you have to realign it using that uh, red passivity knob. Over here, I got my cord tangled. Okay, let's come to this side. I don't know if you can see it right here. What you want to do, 
cool. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. All right, right here on the on the LM guide rail, you've got uh, a silver plate. You've got a screw right here and a screw right here. Just past the screw in the front, you'll see there's an indention with like a little valley. You want to put five to seven drops in there and kind of like push it down the valley. What that will do, that will get your reciprocator lubricated. Basically what your reciprocator is, your reciprocator is what connects the back part of the machine to the head. It's the part that grabs the needle and makes it go up and down. You want to keep that lubricated. You don't want it to dry out on you. So just put a couple of drops in that little opening, kind of like just push it down so it goes down the valley and gets the reciprocator lubricated. Do we have any questions so far on the oiling of the, uh, the embroidery machine? <clears throat> um, the oil that we use, it is a clear white um, machine oil. Um, you do get some that come with your machine. I think it's a big bottle. Um, you can also buy it at, at you know, Coleman & Company. They're great to get everything with. Um, it's just white clear machine oil is all you want to buy. Um, now with the oiling, you've got those spots. There is a diagram on the back of the machine back here. I'm not sure. I don't think it's on the uh, the multi heads, but on the single heads shows you where to oil it. So you can use that diagram. Uh, we also have videos on our support website that will uh, show you a step by step on the oiling of the Avance. The other place that you want to do is uh, it's the grease. This you want to do, I would say, I would check it once a month. Um, and it's basically white lithium grease is what you're going to use. Um, it does not come with the machine, so you'd have to purchase it from either Coleman & Company or uh, your, your local sewing machine shop. I would suggest Coleman & Company. Um, so basically what you want to do is you see the, uh, the LM guide reel up here at the, the, the front. I don't know if you can tell. You can kind of see the grease on it. There you go. That's the grease. What you want to do is look at this once a month and see if it looks dirty. If it looks like it's, you know, not clean anymore, it's got, you know, thread, it looks black, it's got dust, it's got like sand in it, take a paper towel, wipe it off nice and clean, grab your white lithium grease, just put a thin layer on your finger, simply run it through the groove of the top, and then wipe the front of the LM guide rail. And you just want a very thin layer. You just want to make sure that stays lubricated from when the head slides back and forth. You also want to do the same on the other side. So you'll switch it to needle number one and do the same thing you did here, but on the opposite side. The other place that we want to grease the screwdriver is the color change cam. And once again, check it every month. If it looks clean, no need to touch it. Just leave it alone. If it looks dirty, clean it off and put a very thin layer of the white lithium grease on the color change cam. So two screws at the top. Remove the plate. Make sure that when you do take the screws off, you don't drop it and it goes forward and gets stuck back here behind the head because that will cause issues. So it's best to use a screwdriver with a magnetic tip. All right. In here, we have the color change cam, which is this piece right here. This rotates every time I turn this reflectivity knob or when the machine goes from needle to needle. So as you can see, this white color change cam is very clean. This is a brand new machine we just got prepped. Uh, we stuck in our showroom. If you're looking at this and it looks very dirty, it doesn't look clean anymore, take a paper towel, wipe it off. You can turn the red passivity knob over here to the side so that you can rotate it to make sure you get all the grease off of it. Then take a thin layer, place it on your finger and just wipe. Turn the color change cam and keep wiping until you get the whole white cam lubricated with the white lithium grease. And the other thing I want to show you, which is why I grabbed the brand new machine, is can you see the grease build up here in the rollers? That's too much grease. There was too much grease on the color change cam when it came in from the factory. So I made sure our, our prep tech did not remove it so that I could show you uh, if you do put too much, it's going to gather on these rollers. And these rollers won't be able to turn smoothly, and this gunk will build up up here, possibly cause issues. 
So just take a paper towel, clean this off, make sure you just have a very thin layer on that color change cam right here. Otherwise, if it's too much, it's going to gunk up in here on your, on your rollers. Just clean these rollers off and you'll be good to go. Your machine should come with, uh, you know, no grease up in there. Put that right there. So I'll clean this off when I get a paper towel. So the other thing you want to do uh, once a month is look at, look and see if your rollers back here are clean. If they look dirty, if they, you know, if they just even slightly look dirty, <clears throat> take uh, the oil pin and place, just put a drop right there in the middle of that little black dot in the middle of the roller. And then just take your fingers and just roll across the rollers. The other thing you want to do <clears throat> that you could do is, you know, WD-40 works really good, and you want to spray it behind these rollers back here. And that keeps the inside lubricated, cleans it full of dust, lint, um, excess thread that might have gotten caught back there. Spray it. You know, keep a paper towel down here because it will drip. Then once you're done, just take your finger and just roll it across the rollers to get it nice and smooth. That right there would be the pretty much maintenance of the uh, Avance. And like I said, it is, you know, the, the oil is done. You want to do it uh, once a week. The rotary hook, you want to do every four hours of use. And then the, uh, oil, uh, the uh, grease, you want to do, I would say, check it once a month. If it looks clean, stay with it. If it looks dirty, clean it, put new grease on there. If you keep the machine clean, you keep it oiled, it's going to run for you. Uh, it's just like a car, you know, you let the oil run out and, you know, the car is going to break. All right, we got a question real quick. Uh, that's a good one. Okay. All right. Um, I will definitely put that in. Um, obviously, we won't be able to fit a multi-head in this, uh, in our, our webinar room, but it will be one that we can do out there on the, um, in the showroom. So I will get with Mark and, uh, We'll definitely set up a time and shoot out some emails, and I'll let you know um, for the maintenance of the multi-head, because that's a good one, because we do have customers out there with multi-heads, and it is a little bit different than doing it on a single head. So I will definitely mention that and, and shoot you an email so that you're able to watch that video as well. Do we have any other questions on the maintenance of the Avanti embroidery machine? One thing I also want to mention is maybe just once a month, just look up here, maybe take a can of air and just spray up here to make sure there's no lint. Uh, gathered from the thread, um, dust floating around the room that might have grabbed onto the thread, but when it pulled down, it left it in these little spots right here. Just take any air, just blow it out, get all the excess lint, dust, uh, thread particles left away from this because, <coughs> excuse me, this is your tensioning and this is your thread brake sensor. If you do get dust built up in here, this might not turn smoothly, it might be kind of jagged. The machine thinks there's a thread brake, it's going to stop, you're going to get false thread brakes. If there's lint, excess thread, whatever, built up in between these two plates back here, that can cause issues with your tension. It, it could feel like it's too tight because there's too much thread pulling through with all the dip, uh, lint and dust gathered around it. That can cause issues. You're backing off. You just can't get your tension just right. So maybe just once a month, come up, spray a can of air up here, keep it, keep it nice and clean. Um, you know, you don't have to cover the machine at night. Um, you know, if you're going away for a week, just put like an old blanket, an old bed sheet over it just to keep it from the dust. Because um, you don't want to get dust to gather on the cones of threads, because that dust will follow up and get stuck up here in your motor machine and cause tension problems. Um, if you have thread, put them in drawers. If you do have them on a, uh, a thread rack hanging in your room, um, you can always just take a can of air, blow it off before you put it on the machine, make sure there's no excess uh, dust gathered on the cones of thread. Um, I usually tell customers sometimes they're having problems, just take a cone of thread, pull off maybe three to six feet of thread, put it on there. Feed it through to make sure you get to a new batch, a clean, uh, a clean uh, batch of the thread on the cone. The cones are rarely inexpensive, and you know you've roughly got two million stitches on a cone, so pulling three to six feet off the cone is not going to hurt. Um, it's not going to hurt that much because when you put the cone on, you're going to sew with it. Are there any other questions with the basic maintenance of the Avance embroidery machine 1501C? All right, there's one thing I want to show you. Um, on our uh, new Coldesi website, 
I'm going to go ahead and switch to my screen so you can see it. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Can they see what's up there? All right, cool, cool. All right, on our Coldesi website, which is coldesi.com, um, if you scroll down on the left-hand side, about halfway down, uh, we have what we call those Coldesi reviews. These are what our customers have to say um, about things they've experienced with either a tech, um, their buying experience, uh, Coleman and Company, um, shipping, what have you. You can, uh, you know, you can read reviews. You can read more here. You can see what people posted. Um, if you want to write a review, it'd be great. You just click here, write a review. You know, tell them, you know, about the webinar that you liked it, you appreciate it. You know, what you'd like to see in new webinars. Um, you know, because we're always looking for new ideas to better help you uh, become better at your business and to help you make money, keeping you as part of our family. So uh, by all means, you know, go to Cold Desi, check out the reviews, and. Uh, Go from there. All right, we have a question. I'm going to go back to the, uh, the camera. Let's see. Tension question. Um, if I'm looping on top, do I need to back off the tension knob or tighten it? If you're seeing looping on the top of your embroidery, it basically means your top thread could be too loose. One way to look at it is, is it consistent with most of your, your, your needles? If it's just one needle, then that one needle is too loose. First thing I want to do is just make sure the path is correct. Make sure it's going between the plates, around your thread break sensor wheel, one and a half turns. Make sure it's going through the tension spring, through the tension lever, all the way down. Make sure that's correct first. Then next is what you want to tighten the tension. To tighten it, don't just barely turn it, but go ahead and crank it around two or three times to get that tension a little bit tighter to take care of those loops. If it's with most of the threads up here, first thing I want to look at is your spring take up lever, which is this little spring lever to the far right of the springs, which is right here. On average, it will either stick straight out at you or it will be pointing down to the ground a couple of clicks, like a 15 degree angle. This does work on the multi heads as well. This adjusts your tension springs on the multi heads. So if you feel that you're getting really loose, just check this and make sure somehow it didn't get bumped up because you do not have the door on the multi heads. And just take it and just pull it back down a little bit. When you do pull it down, you will notice that your springs underneath the rollers, they will not be all the same. They will not be identical. And that just depends on the tension that we have up here from when it was prepped. So what you want to do, and plus it all depends on which one's over the needle plate. That one's probably got a little more tension than the rest of them because that was the one that was last sewn. So just tilt it down. You know, I usually go one or two clicks to give it a good start, maybe three to get that right angle. And that should take care of your loops on top of the garment. So the first thing you want to look at, is it one needle or is it multiple needles? The next thing, make sure the thread path is correct on the one needle. Then go ahead and uh, check the spring lever and then go ahead and tighten or loosen uh, the tension on that one needle and then give it another sew out. And you see this will just slip right back in. Just line it up and you'll be good to go right there. Are there any questions on the, uh, the basic maintenance of the Avante 1501C? I do want to thank everybody for, for taking time and, and coming out um, today to go over the maintenance of the embroidery machine. I know that sometimes it is covered in the uh, the trainings, but you know the trainings are in two days, and you know a lot of times it's a lot of information, so you might forget um, some you know some of the oiling spots. Uh, this is a lot of information to take in two days, which is why we do these webinars to better help you, our customers get more in tune with the machine on how to either fix, do certain things like puff, we've done applique, tensions, um, and now the basic maintenance of the motor machine. So we do the machine on Wednesdays and we do the software on Fridays. Uh, it rotates on the software, one Friday will be the hot fix, which is for the bling, cam, spangle. Uh, the other Friday is on the embroidery machine. This Friday I think it is with uh, embroidery, I will have to double check that. Uh, feel free to sign up, and if you do sign up and you can't make it, you know, you'll still get an email with the video link. Because uh, we know that your, your schedule is busy, and you can't always take time off your work, uh, you know, to watch a 30, 45 minutes to an hour video on how to do certain things. 
So we understand that, which is why we send the videos out to you after the webinar is done so that you can have a recording of it to watch at your convenience. I do hope everybody has enjoyed today. Um, like I said, feel free to write a review. Let people know. I'm glad it was very helpful. Thank you. I, I you know, I, I do this for you and like suggestions. On the multi-head uh, basic maintenance, we'll definitely get that going. And uh, so that you can understand the basic maintenance of the multi-head. Um, if I don't talk to anybody, by then I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas and a, a safe New Year. Um, you know, be careful out there. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys later in, uh, in 2017. Thank you.